This video is about the unique value proposition of NEO and what I think will drive its economic impact. So make sure to watch it till the very end. But first, I have to be honest with you, last week was really rough. There has been a huge correction in innovation strategies, again in US listed Chinese names. So these are the two main strategies that I invest in. And obviously my portfolio was hit hard. So I actually did what I previously announced and I took off some chips off the table, mainly in some of the US names that I have that I think have kind of over extended values and uh, multiples and frankly also some of my crypto holdings because I can now realize gains without having to pay taxes in Germany while remaining long the Bitcoin opportunity. This was actually the first time in a very long time that I actually sold some of my portfolio because I have to say I got cautious around the many issues that we have out there right now ranging from the Fed tapering, liquidity, popping bubbles in some innovation names, some of the valuations and also new corona variants and the impacts and conflicts that it may bring around the world. And of course regarding my Chinese names in the portfolio there has been lots of mostly misleading news around the delisting issue as well as other fear, uncertainty and doubt articles last week. But this video is not about this topic. If you have watched my previous videos, you know my personal take on it. And if you don't know it yet, you can look them up or also uh, look at my Patreon article in which I've described the summary on the markets as well as the issues around China and how media and short seller are actually taking advantage of it. At some point in time, the issue will be resolved in either one or the other direction and we'll have clarity. Lastly, the Chinese SAC named the CSRC has just issued a statement that I will link in the comments below. As always, I recommend using primary articles instead of relying on media articles that follow a certain agenda. And of course, like always, you also shouldn't follow me because I'm just a YouTuber and you need to make up your own mind and I cannot give financial advice or your personal risk management there. Now back to the topic, Neo. I want to talk about how I understand the company and its secret. And I think there is a new mega trend and topic emerging, which is shaped by China and which is also new to the automotive industry, namely upgradability. I just saw this recently in an automotive consulting presentation by an industry professional who listed upgradability as one of the major trends. In this context, of course, NEO's battery swapping comes to mind. NEO can switch batteries and has pioneered the separation between battery and the vehicle body. This gives optionality regarding battery capacities, technology, and therefore upgradability to the part of the vehicle that is still under most progress of innovation aside from software. So even the first generation of NEO cars can swap in the latest battery technology and benefit from technology and innovation progress. And maybe you remember NEO Day in February where they announced a new battery technology called hybrid solid state battery. NEO promised that this battery would be industry leading and have up to 1000 kilometers in range. That's NECD standards. We still have to see the real world benchmarks of course. And the benefits of this new technology should include ultra high energy density of 360 watt hour per kilogram, an improvement of 50%, good battery life, higher charging efficiency and new anode material. While there wasn't any updates from NEO side for this during the year and many have doubted that solid state batteries can actually be introduced soon, I think I found proof that NEO is on its way to sticking to this goal of releasing this new type of battery next year. There have been various rumors around which company can possibly uh, produce this new technology and battery. Is it CITL or a smaller company? And I think I found proof researching a Chinese company called WeLion, which is specializing in this sort of technology. Furthermore, I found direct connection in the business registry between this company and NEO. So here is a company called uh, Weilai Xinneng uh, Tozi, so um, uh, NEO, um, a new energy investment and that is a, a new company um, and what is interesting here there is one company here uh, Hubei uh, which I was digging into deeper here so that is now the, the, the website dedicated just to this company here and um, so this Hubei uh, Jiangjie equity investment partnership and so on has actually a stake in this Wee Lion um, battery uh, company. So this is the Wee Lion, um, this uh, battery manufacturer. And here you can see in the shareholders that there is this company that I've just researched before, number 17. That shareholder here is the exact same company in which, uh, which has this connection to this NEO 
a new energy um, investment here. And that means there is a direct um, sort of um, investment relationship between this battery company and NEO. And that for me is a very strong hint um, that this might actually be the company who will be um, producing the solid state batteries for NEO. So NEO appears to be invested through a subsidiary and is owning a stake in this battery manufacturer which has patents. And these patents are exactly matching the description in the presentation of NEO Day. To double check, I approached one of their company members on LinkedIn and tried to confirm whether or not they work for NEO on the hybrid solid state battery. While the employee wouldn't confirm it due to confidentiality, the data of the batteries he mentioned, as well as the time plan, did fit exactly to what NEO proposed. Most importantly, he stated that they are building a manufacturing site right now and even told me the gigawatt hour capacity, which I'll keep private for now. But my takeaway is that this would fit a ramp of the ET7 and a first rollout to the users by the end of 2022. When Li Bin was asked about the status of this battery, he confirmed to be confident for the launch and the rollout next year. So this is just an example of a new technology that will be first available to their newest flagship, the ET7, but also to all of the existing fleet users later on given the benefits of the battery swapping. So why is all of this important? Well, the magic word is customer lifetime value. Maybe you know that I have a background in e-commerce and that's maybe the way why I think about NIO the way I do. NIO to me is not a car manufacturer, it is a platform internet business. This aligns with Liebens history as a founder of a car platform in China. Today, most of the e-commerce innovations like live streaming, like social group buying are all coming out of China namely TikTok and so on, which is the biggest e-commerce market in the world with a very fierce competition. So this is shaping entrepreneurs like Li Bin and their thinking. So let's take a look at this e-commerce metric. The customer lifetime value is a key performance indicator often used by e-commerce businesses in conjunction with the customer acquisition cost. This defines the key value of the business. So let's see how NEO stands and how upgradability is core to this concept of economic value creation. The formula for customer lifetime value is average number of transactions per month times the average order value times the average gross margin times the average customer lifespan in months and those divided by the number of clients for the period. Take Tesla for example. Tesla should have the highest number of transactions per month when it comes to car sales simply because Tesla sells the most cars and Tesla has in my views the best chances to conquer the mass market and the largest addressable market globally. Also Tesla should be leading regarding the gross margin because Tesla is really about declining cost curves, vertical integration and also having a very low cost basis. However, just on the metric of car sales, NIO is already leading in terms of the average order value. Yet of course their transactions per month will be less for now because they have different target group, more affluent high value users. Yet I would argue that NIO can increase the average numbers of transactions later on through first the NEO Life business, which brings in monthly revenue streams that are not dependent on car sales. So creating more transactions aside from car sales in the area of e-commerce and other service businesses like the battery swapping and, and also by entering some lower tier market segments at the later stage, for example, the new ET5 or other mass market targeted cars that may be released later and thereby also increasing the number of transactions on the car sales side. In addition, while NEO may not be leading on the gross margin, still their target is 25%, which is very good in the industry. And given their higher average order value, the absolute amount of cash flow will be higher than for other companies. And last but not least, the differentiator will be the average customer lifespan in conjunction with the average number of transactions per month. Upgradeability, battery as a service and e-commerce are leading to more frequent transactions of already acquired users and a higher customer retention. These are very important metrics for internet businesses. Even if you are one of the first customers of NEO, you don't have to worry about if you bought the cheapest 70 kilowatt hour battery back then. You could simply upgrade to the newest battery, the hybrid solid state battery, when it is being rolled out. Yes, you would have to pay a fee for that, which is good for NEO, but there is no need to sell your vehicle body, which is perfectly fine in shape, in order just to upgrade to the latest technology. And over this weekend, NEO announced that they will take the concept even further. One of their design chiefs was making a presentation at a supplier forum in China, speaking about how NEO designs their car platform for upgradability. This means that hardware components are modularized, similar to the battery pack, 
and are integrated by NEO on the hardware and software side for a simpler and easier upgradability. You mentioned how the latest 2.0 platform on which the newer models like the ET7 will be released and the next platforms are actually carrying this design philosophy. Furthermore, the NEO president just announced that they will start rolling out hardware upgrades to existing fleet users beginning early next year. This means users can purchase upgrade packages including 5G connectivity, new screens, new cameras, new sensors as an upgrade package. NEO takes care of the upgrade and the software integration. So of course NEO is not perfect. This is also somehow born out of the dark times of their bankruptcy period when most of their timelines got delayed and they didn't have the, the money to um, bring out new cars. And so the latest platform didn't come out earlier. But again, the design principle seems to be established very early on and importantly, all of this pays into each of the variables of the customer lifetime value. So the higher the customer lifetime value, the higher the cash flows, the more valuable the business will be. So the NEO concept and ecosystem here is unique in the automotive industry and battery swapping is key to the design principle of the company. So while some argue that NEO houses, NEO life and battery swapping are just nice to have costly ideas for pampering the NEO customers, I'd argue that the economic benefits of this ecosystem will be very hard to beat over time. And this is simply grounded in the law and formula of customer lifetime value and this is what I think will drive the valuation of NEO in the future once the markets are realizing it.